First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the event for having me here today and for giving us the opportunity to introduce the relationship coffee model to the Asian coffee community. Before I jump into my presentation, I would actually like to also thank our, my fellow panelists for introducing key topics in my presentation, such as low prices, transparency, relationship, and traceability. So let's get started. Two weeks ago, as part of our Let's Talk conferences cycle, the founder of our company asked to a group of experts, is our industry broken? The response he got was a, the response he got was a sound yes. The problem with coffee trading and the fundamental issue that undermines the long-term sustainability of coffee production worldwide is that we see trade through the lens of the sea market. Coffee prices have been falling constantly over the last 12 months for over 45%. Coffee growers are facing challenges such as climate change, coffee leaf rust, and many others, but due to very low prices, as one of the fellow panelists explained already, there's little or no investment in the coffee future. External factors such as oil prices and any other type of uh, factors combine and affect the sea market. Very important to say, the current coffee prices are not fair nor sustainable. Cost of production in many of the countries where coffee is being grown internationally are actually above the current market prices. Therefore, this business is just not viable for small farmers. Let me just give you a quick look of the traditional coffee supply chain. As you can tell, we have the farmers, we have wet mills, dry mills, there's the importer there, the roaster, and finally the retailer. There's clearly a disconnect here in the flow of information, and the producer is not necessarily related or presented in any form to the final consumer, to the roaster, to the community. The credit for the quality is being taken away from him. These type of traditional models constantly characterize because there is a lack of information and a lack of transparency when coffee is being traded. So I'm gonna give you two quick examples of the way coffee can easily come to the hands of an international buyer. Since these slides are not present in the booklet you have, I'm gonna just take an extra time to present them to you and read them slowly. So first, the farmers would form premium groups and harvest cherries on a specific day. Afterwards, they would proceed to a washing station and dry mill to process premium lots separately, giving them priority attention. That is followed by the, when the exporter sells a specialty coffee processed beans at a pre-agreed price with certain quality level and quantity to an international buyer. The other method is where you would actually see the cooperatives or the producing associations at origin doing most of those operations themselves. So they would go all the way from the farmer up to the dry mill. What's very important to mention here is that, again, there is a lot of lack of transparency and middlemen can be involved in this operation constantly. Again capturing value, capturing the value that belongs to coffee growers. Now, I would like to present you why the sustainable harvest relationship coffee model can be a unique way for Korean and Asian roasters to build a unique platform that will provide a constant supply of 
high quality traceable specialty coffees. Our company was founded in 1997 by Mr. David Griswold. The, he founded the company based on the principle that increased transparency would foster and add value throughout the entire supply chain. We are based on the principle that transparent and direct relationships can take this business further. As it's mentioned there, and as Chris presented yesterday, we are based out of, Portland, uh, out of Portland, Oregon, sorry about that. It's one of the most important coffee cities in the US where many trends are being set and we're right there, we're present in that market. More so, we are a certified benefit corporation that speaks highly of the kind of values and principles that we have when doing business. We have pioneered the relationship coffee model and we have championed the direct trade system for over 16 years now. We currently source coffee from 15 different countries where like all the way throughout Latin America and Eastern Africa where we work closely with producer organizations, 86 of them, that deliver constant high quality coffees in a very different manner. Our model has impacted over the last 16 years over 2,000 small holders worldwide and our impact is still being felt all over the world. So what really makes us unique is our origin-based approach. The kind of investments we make, the kind of work that we do at Origin is what really sets apart relationship coffee and sustainable harvest from any other coffee importer. We have four nonprofit offices at Origin. Those offices have, have helped us reinvest over 30% of our annual profits back to the producer communities. Those offices serve us to the purpose to create and build stronger capacity at the producer level. Just let me give you a quick look of the market impact that the relationship coffee has. As of last year, we imported one out of every six pounds that were traded as fair trade certified coffees into North America. Over 90% of our coffees carry at least one type of certification. And most important, we also have award-winning top quality scoring coffees. Last year, we traded over 21 million pounds of coffee. Proof of the business case for the relationship coffee model is our market impact, as I mentioned. We work with both large commercial roasters and third-way exclusive roasters, as Chris mentioned yesterday. More so, we also bring high-quality, soluble, and instant coffees to industries such as Ben & Jerry's. Again, this is a quick look of the traditional supply chain. What we've done is that we have reshaped the linear structure of the traditional supply chain and we have brought it and created an expanded multi-stakeholder model. We had brought in non-government organizations, social banks, research institutions, national and regional governments, and we have been playing the role beyond only importing the coffee, but more important, we have been the facilitator organization that has fostered dialogue and that has fostered connections between all the stakeholders in different ways. So why we have a transformative approach? Because we have five pillars that are always part of our operation and define who we are. We invest in capacity building, as I told you already, and I'm gonna explain that in further detail in a second. We believe in transparent and long-term business relationships. We have absolute traceability. Every single pound of coffee that we trade, we know where it comes from and we know where it's going. We have also been able to provide access to credit to smallholder associations that use our contracts as a collateral for financing and purchasing the coffee that they're gonna get from the smallholders. Additionally, 
We have invested heavily in technology. We believe in the power of technology, and we have given our producers access to iPads and our traceability system that has enabled all of us to foster this business and support ourselves through the power of technology. We recently engaged in a partnership in a very unique project with the Stanford University to work harder on challenges that coffee growers are facing, such as processing and fermentation. So we truly believe that education is a key part of our approach. It's the pillar that we use to make the difference at origin. As they mentioned before, risk management is a huge element nowadays in the coffee industry. And oftentimes, producers do not have access to this type of trainings. We have brought international experts to origin where we train cooperative leaders, where we sit together and we study the market. We study how to manage risk. Again, our capacity building has been shown in the trainings that we have done for quality. To give you an idea, we have over 200 certified cure graders in our supply chain that we have been able to train and to help certify all around the globe. We even have cure instructors within our company. What we have done there is cre we have there created a common language for quality. We have established a way where a language where producers can meet buyers' need and desire because they understand what's in the cup. They understand what's happening with quality, what's a positive attribute, what's what the market wants. Very important also, and as some other speaker mentioned today, we have done trainings in best agricultural practices to help producers grow coffee in a sustainable manner and in a very competitive way. Here, I'm just gonna take a break to give you a quick glance of our Hallmark training event, which is Let's Talk Coffee. This is our annual gathering where we bring together all of our stakeholders, including financiers, NGOs, government. We also pay so our producers can come and meet with their clients. We have brought associations, institutions, everyone together. And we have hosted this beautiful event for over 11 years now. Last one, we had it in El Salvador, and we had the participation of over 420 people. Right now, I'm gonna just show you how the relationship coffee model comes to life, and it's all at once together. We never thought when we first started this event that we would ever get to this kind of family, to this kind of private supply chain that has all the stakeholders involved. And what makes this special is that as we start to realize more and more stakeholders actually care about how farmers live and about how coffee quality improves and about how a supply chain can be an engine for development. to be at Sustainable Harvest 10th anniversary of Let's Talk Coffee. What a huge accomplishment. And when you think about just the measure of what 10 years of engagement really looks like and what the benefits of that, that prolonged and systematic and repeat engagement has, I think we're all here and have our own stories of how that level of engagement has changed the way we do business and changed the way we think about one another. We're looking at specialty coffee because specialty coffee has made a huge change in, in how business practice is done over the years. The four people who are sitting with me, they've taken throughout their own brands and companies new and creative ways to deliver impact, to identify their farmer supply chains, to be able to work in partnership with them year over year in a way that's beneficial on both sides. We all come here with a really open mind. I mean, we had people from the size of, oh God, tiny little roaster in Portland, all the way up to, you know, 
potentially the biggest coffee buyer in the world, Walmart, here, and everybody was very open, I thought, um, and just sharing in ideas and just really trying to come together and, and figure out um, how we're going to address some of the looming problems in coffee. We're trying to take artisans, small-scale producers, who are, who are producing with passion, people like you in this room, companies like Sustainable Harvest and our partners Coffee Extracts, and we want to find ways to scale up that production so that it can become uh, larger and, and have larger impacts in the world. You're very eager to see relationships built directly between growers and the final buyer. Tell me about that vision. That's something very interesting because in this globalized market, traditionally, human faces disappear. And in this particular model that you have, there is a direct translation that I understand that we are in a market, that there is a competition, but at the same time, there are human beings involved. And that's very interesting because that has to change the way business is done in the world. And we have to change this world, and that's one way of changing it. Hablemos de café, es la oportunidad máxima que tiene un agricultor, un empresario, un participante de la vida cafetera en aprender, conocer y compartir experiencias en un espacio de cuatro días, pero que se convierte en el trabajo de todo un año. I think what makes it so special is the fact that you have practically all the links in the coffee chain together. There is so much of transparency, there's so much of friendship, there's so much of knowledge exchange, and there is so much of coffee, but coffee in a, in a, very, in a very beautiful sense. In the sense you learn science of coffee, you learn the art of coffee, you have the entire coffee chain coming together, and I think that is something which is in fact, in my opinion, it's very difficult to achieve, and that's what Let's Talk Coffee has achieved. So, as you can tell, our model can not only bring higher quality coffees that are reliable, that are traceable, and that are high quality, but most important, our system and our relationship coffee model, it's all about higher value relationships. We believe in the power of transparency. We are here to present this model to the Asian coffee community because we're looking for partnerships, we're looking for collaboration. This is only one approach, this is our approximation. We believe that we can do it better by doing it together. So thank you very much. Kamsa Vida.